Community Connections CBMS Local sounds, thoughts, passions, and success Celebrating local Your neighbor's got a story to tell Happy Monday, Waterloo Region. You're listening to CKMS Community Connections for January the 29th, 2024. My name is Bob Jonquin. In the studio, I have Jennifer Strong. Hello. Good and morning. Barbara Strong of the CFUW. Good morning, everyone. And we'll be talking to Barbara about the uh, Indigenous Film Festival taking place in February, coming up in just a few minutes. But we're going to start off with some new tracks from Camera Noise. Camera Noise. It's a brand new album. We'll have Camera Noise in the studio this coming Friday, February the 2nd at 3 p.m. Tune in then and listen to more good music. In the studio now, we have Barbara Spronk. And online, we have Star Island. We're really excited. Um, CFUW. February 28th again at the as one of our and and 
term determined that the best thing we could do to begin with was to look as much as we could and teach ourselves about Indigenous issues. And after a couple of years of pretty intensive work on our part, we decided... Hi, I can't hear you. Hear you. <laughs> okay, Melissa, that's um, Mr. Ireland from the Indigenous Relations on the web conference, but apparently she can't hear us, even oh. though we can hear her just fine. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll deal with that in, uh, in just a second. Okay. Carry on, Barbara. Sure. So we decided in the summer of last year that us to take some community focused action and we were looking for a way to honor these calls to action and particularly community and increase awareness among non-indigenous people settlers such as ourselves of the indigenous experience so we reached out to indigenous partners at our local post-secondary institutions because this was a natural fit with CFUW's focus on education. And the reason we chose film was because film is such a powerful medium to engage people's emotions, to s connect with each viewer in multiple different ways, uh, to allow us to explore un unseen worlds and places and experiences that are probably unknown to us. Um, films allow us to look at cultures outside our own and give us insights into places that might be right next door. And they also can reveal unspoken truths. So film was a great choice of medium for us. And you're partnering with the Indigenous Relations from the University of Waterloo. Yes, we are, and also Indigenous Relations uh, offices at Wilfrid Laurier and Conestoga College. Oh, so this is this is a cross academic yep. uh, institution. You bet. Yeah, yep. sure. You've got Melissa Star Ireland in the web conference again, I think. get involved with different educational institutions? Where did uh, that partnership come from? Oh, gosh. Um, probably over 10 years ago now, uh, Wilfrid Laurier celebrated their 100th anniversary, and we had uh, speakers at our annual, at our regular general meeting from Laurier, uh, focusing on their Indigenous Relations Office. And when we asked those ladies what we do to address some of the issues that they brought to our attention, they said, come and get to know us. So we did. They had soup lunches every week on a Tuesday. So our ladies turned up with soup, with brownies, with, you know, open I ears, you. basically. And and a number of us got to know the folks at Wilfrid Laurier pretty well. Amongst them, Melissa. Melissa was at that time coordinating student, uh, Indigenous Student Affairs at Laurier. And we, I know, we just hit it off. And Melissa, through the years, has been an incredible support to us. And her, her, current uh, superior at uh, Waterloo, you know, very okay, the one elder G. Decker. relationship 
on so many about uh, thanks so much so Bob, Bob. <laughs> it's a very, very exciting, exciting um, um, speaker and speaker film and series that we have going on, on. and uh, UW, UW um, Office of Indigenous, Office Relations, Indigenous Relations, Relations is so is proud that we can connect, connect with our partners, with our partners and, community and community to provide the film series together. The film series together and in terms of what we do at we the do Office of Indigenous at Relations at the University of Waterloo, of Waterloo we support we ongoing support reconciliation, reconciliation and decolonizing work at the university. At the university. And one way is one to way connect is with to others connect and provide others opportunities for education and connection. And so connection. we think that the film series so supports the these goals. Support these goals. I think it probably does too. So, um, Melissa was explaining about how uh, the Indigenous Relations Group supports the, uh, or the, the film series supports the goals of the Indigenous Relations Groups. Um, maybe you can give us um, a quick rundown of the films that are being presented. Uh, sure. Sure, and the dates too. Yep. Okay. Um, <clears throat> happy to talk about these films. It's called Run Woman on Monday, February the 5th at Princess Twin matinee at 2 o'clock. And here's the, um, here's the promo from the movie site itself. When a steady diet of donuts, pizza, cake, and cigarettes lands single mother back in a diabetic coma, she receives a ghostly life coach in the form of legendary marathon hero, Tom Longboat, who provides the push back needs to change your life. And this is, I wouldn't call it necessarily a light film, but it's got so much, so many comic touches in it. I think people will, you know, really relate to it in, in at any number of levels. The second film that we're showing is also on a Monday, Monday, February the 12th, again at 2 o'clock at the Princess Twin, and it's called Beans. And it's a little more heavy hitting, this one, because it concerns um, the Oka crisis in, I think it was 1990, based on two events. And the director, Tracy Deer, was actually a teenager during the Oka crisis, which was a 78-day standoff between two Mohawk communities and government forces in 1990 Quebec. So it's not strictly autobiographical, but it's certainly informed by Tracy Deer's own experiences up in that time and Beans basically tells us the story of Beans who is um, a preteen during this time and encountering all the issues that preteens even in non-indigenous society encounter but within the context of this conflict so it's it's pretty powerful stuff and the third film Bone Bones of Crows is an evening showing on February the 28th, again at the Princess Twin at 7 o'clock. This one features Cree co-talker Aileen Spears and her 
how she survives her very traumatic past in Canada's residential school system to continue her family's generational fight against systemic starvation, racism, and sexual abuse. This can be a pretty tough film to watch, but it's I think necessary viewing for us all yeah. because it gives us such well gripping hardly comes close to describing it yeah. account of what it was like growing up especially in the residential school system the trailers for the films are online and they, yep. Jennifer said that um, you had a chance to watch them I watched them this morning, and yeah, they all look like great films, very thought provocative, but very necessary. I did cry when I watched uh, Bones of Crows. And that was just the trailer. That was just the trailer. <laughs> yeah. So it's very important that we all know this and that we can, you know, begin to bridge the gaps that are in our society and around the world, really. Well, I have to say that we couldn't do this without our partnerships with Indigenous in the institutions because, for example, it was Linda that pointed us towards Run Woman Run, and uh, a woman called um, Bonnie Whitlow from Wilfrid Laurier was actually an actor in this film and a very good film uh, friend of the director, and also is a Creational presence behind a mural that features very prominently in the movie. So we've been able to get a bit of an inside track from Monty about the film. But even more salient, I think, is because these films might be hard to watch for some people, especially for any Indigenous folks in the audience. We've enlisted Melissa's help, and she has offered it very generously um, in any assistance that members of the audience might need in just processing and coming to grips with uh, incidents that might trigger really unhappy memories. Yeah. yeah. Well, Melissa, how did you choose the films to, to be aired? Well, I can say that it was a collaborative process, well, I and um, a I would say that the um, Canadian Federation of University Women the, uh, came together, and, and our office came together, uh, came together and Laurier, and, and we put some things on the table, and then we Laurier talked about the pros and cons. So I wouldn't say table, that I'm responsible for picking the films, but where I came in was how do we films, match where maybe really in, great salient speakers to each film maybe and then um, provide uh, some to promotional each support and, 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 and connection to community uh, in promoting the films. And connection to community in promoting the films. So as much as anything, it was a between uh, the Indigenous relations of University of Waterloo to pick the films and uh, the CFUW picking the films. And uh, um, Melissa uh, told us about picking the films just now. Um, she was saying that um, it, it was not just she who picked the films. Uh, what sort of uh, input did CFUW have to that? Well, it was a collaborative effort. I mean, we've been meeting monthly, if not more frequently, um, with our Indigenous partners. And our criteria were First of all, films that told story because of our choice of title, winter storytelling. Um, winter is a time of telling stories in local indigenous communities, and Melissa can tell you more about that. So our focus was on, first of all, on stories. Secondly, we wanted indigenous made films, and thirdly, we wanted that spoke to 
study circle had been Um, and our Really, and no. Yeah. You're showing these at the princess. Oh, and a big shout out to the princess. Oh, they are terrific. They have been so good to work with. They are so community oriented. They couldn't be, you know, a better sort of technical and venue partner. How did you uh, partner up with them? How did, uh... Well, one of our members. Uh, Peggy Rose um, took on the job of being our princess liaison, and they were excited about this from the beginning. And they were particularly excited about the fact that we're going to be following each film with a discussion, a forward discussion, yeah. Indigenous led. Okay. And Melissa can tell you about um, the three people who are going to be. Leading those discussions for us. Okay. Who is going to be leading the discussions? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, here. for the first film, um, Run Woman Run, yeah, absolutely. That so we've um, diabetes and health um, issues really Woman center Run. around the main character. Um, so, we have invited Crystal really Bomberry from Indigenous Diabetes character. Health Circle, so we have a community member from Six Nations, from to talk about circle. the movie and to frame that. And then the second one, Beans, we have um, Mike and Henry, who is an elder and knowledge keeper at the University of Waterloo. And believe it or not, his life has been full of Indigenous activism and advocacy. And he was actually literally at Oka. So he has some um, thoughts he'd like to share with the audience about being at Oka in the Thought 90s and what that was like for him. He's also open to question and answers after the film. And then lastly, we have Nanani Sweetmaker, and she is in our Center for Teaching Excellence at the University of Waterloo. And she has been an Excellent. Indigenous curriculum specialist and has a huge expertise in talking about Excellent. and framing and Indigenous experiences at Indian residential schools. And she comes in with just so much knowledge, and she has especially been able to communicate really well in front of non-Indigenous audiences around the experiences of Indian residential school audience. So a, a great lineup of local people who can speak to the, so these films. A lineup of local people who can speak to these films. That's great. I've um, met Megan Henry a, a number of times. So uh, I know that he'll be a, a very engaging speaker after the, uh, the movie's over. I think what I want to do is take a, a, a brief break, listen to some more camera noise, and then uh, when we come back, have uh, Star Ireland tell us um, a bit more about the Indigenous relations uh, at UW. And maybe if, uh, if you have any knowledge about it, the Indigenous relations at the other uh, institutions as well, uh, Conestoga College and University of, uh, of Laurier. Let's have a look at the uh, notes. I'm going to be uh, listening to um, Too Many Notes by Camera Noise on CKMS FM Community Connections. <laughs>
before she does so. I've asked uh, Melissa to talk about the, uh, in the indigenous relations programs at the other universities. Um, you have a, a second or two to, to tell us about that? And perhaps not. Melissa is going to be sending us some information uh, by email and uh, we'll add that to our show notes and then uh, we'll have that available for you at radiowaterloo.ca slash ccc where you can catch up on uh, all the contact information, the uh, events listings for the upcoming uh, Indigenous films and uh, all the other relevant information that you need to know about Indigenous film programs in CFUW and the Indigenous Relations uh, group or um, program at University of Waterloo as well. So Barbara, yeah, you've been to the Princess before. Oh, many times. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. A favorite. Yeah. yeah. In this particular case, I understand that the film program is available at no charge. That's right. We're making admission free because our intent is to have as many members of the community as possible with no barriers to uh, join with us in this celebration of Indigenous film. Yeah, I'm a big believer in having education be at no charge. Aren't we uh, all? Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's really important because, you know, uh, somebody once said that there are probably brains as good as Einstein's uh, who are in bodies that are working the fields without a chance to um, express those ideas. Yep. So making education available to everyone with no barriers for, for tuition is a great thing. Well, um, our main purpose in CFEW is to promote education, especially for women and girls. So anything we can do to further that, right. we're working at it. But there, there must be a cost to renting the Princess Theatre for uh, three evenings for an extended yeah. period of time. Mm -hmm. um, how does CFUW manage to fund such a big festival? Well, you know, we were we were very fortunate, I think, in a way, not because the pandemic was any way fortunate, but it did save us cost of renting space for our meetings. Mm. Um, and that left us with some surplus in our budget, frankly. And the club decided that the best way to deal with that surplus was to spend it on uh, community engagement initiatives. Ah. So this is one of them. It is certainly it. So there's, there are going to be other community engagement oh, indeed, events coming indeed, up. Indeed, indeed, yeah. Can, yep. uh, can you tell us any secrets? Well, we're working, we're working on diversifying our membership. So we're working on reaching out to um, other women's organizations in the community, especially racialized women's um, organizations. And we, for example, uh, bought a table at the gala uh, that was that took place I think late last year organized by the Coalition of Muslim Women in Kitchener Waterloo um, so those are a few examples and there will probably be more coming up hmm. do you have any timelines on those things um, we don't have timelines for the diversification initiatives yet. Okay, so We're still in the organizing stages of that. Right. But I can say that because of our work in getting this diversification initiative off the ground, we were able to do interviews with 11 organizations in our local region, one of which was the African Women's Alliance. Mm -hmm. And because of that association, we were able to have, as one of the speakers at our December the 6th vigil, uh, Fadila Balogun, yes. who's the executive director, yeah. who I think you know quite well. Yes, yeah. we had Fadila on the show uh, yeah. a little yeah. while back in December. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, to talk exactly about that, mm-hmm. the, uh, the, the vigil, the December 6th vigil. Yeah, exactly. So we're, we're already making those connections, and we hope to have some initiatives underway soon. Good. Yeah, I think people and groups, organizations working together, uh, the sum is stronger than the parts. Always, always. There's an African proverb that says, if you go, want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. <laughs> yeah. That's very profound. Yeah. Will you be going, Jennifer? I'm just thankful that I'm here and I'm finding more out about the film festival and your group and that I get to be part of it and that CKMS gets to be part of yeah. this important work as well because we're such a diverse community and I'm a newcomer myself yeah. so I'm always looking to get to know more and, and do community work. Yeah. yeah, I'm a newcomer as well. I really only arrived here in 2004. Oh, so really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep, yep, yep. There's, you know, we've lost Melissa, unfortunately, but there is one other aspect, one other partnership of ours in connection with the film festival that I'd, I'd like to bring to people's attention, which is we're partnering with a national Indigenous-led registered charity called Indigenous Youth Roots. Mm. admission is free as we've already mentioned and partly because of that we thought people might be willing to reach into their pockets and come up with uh, donations to some indigenous organization and again thanks to Melissa she pointed us towards this quite amazing national organization that works with indigenous youth across the country to uh, involve them in initiatives like a policy school for Indigenous youth aged 18 to 29. And they also administer a series of pretty impressive community grants to grassroots Indigenous youth groups. $2,500 $2,500 to $25,000 to support these kids, basically, mm-hmm. in their community endeavors, uh, community development. And it goes along with a lot of mentorship and other kinds of support from Indigenous youth roots. Mm-hmm. So we're very excited about partnering with them, and we hope that people will indeed open their pockets and help support this incredible work. Yeah. It's too bad that initiatives like this depend on private funding. I, don't I know. Donation funding. Yep. Charity is, is what I've heard it called, a, yep. a charitable yep. um, way of running a government. Um, but this is the kind of thing that I think should be uh, on a par with zero tuition for universities. Um, the government is there to take care of its citizens, and this is one way of doing so. Is there any kind of push on by CFUW or the other organizations to pressure the government to providing more funding for initiatives like this? Well, one of the main reasons that CFUW exists is our work of advocacy. And we have 121 clubs across the country that agree uh, annually on which policy initiatives CFUW clubs are going to promote and work on um, in the ensuing years. And there have been a number of these policy decisions made um, by resolutions that get discussed and approved at every club and then at the annual general meeting nationally a lot of uh, policy initiatives to do with indigenous uh, support and indigenous issues, uh, particularly in the realm of education, but also health, um, governance, um, incarceration rates, you know, the whole raft of issues that hit our news Mm -hmm. channels every day. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think I want to take another break. Uh, listen to some more camera noise. Are you up mm-hmm. for that? Sure. This is called... <laughs> Interesting observation on the title of that, Too Many Notes. Barbara, did you... Uh... Oh, it just, it just brought to mind uh, the film Amadeus, in which I think whichever aristocrat Mozart was working for accused him of too many notes. You know, the music was too busy for him. <laughs> yeah, so. And yet Mozart has endured... And uh, camera and noise has taken advantage of that. Yeah, and, and the name of the aristocrat has left at least my mind. So yes. there you go. I can picture the actor in the movie, but I couldn't tell you the name either. So, <laughs> yeah. Back to CFUW for a second. It's Canadian Federation of University Women, but it isn't just university women anymore, which is why mm-hmm. the organization has reverted back to the acronym, CFUW. Yep. Uh, but you said you're diversifying, uh, mm-hmm. I guess, to diversify um, away from just university women. Well, and diversifying in any number of ways. I mean, our, as you said, Jennifer, we're an incredibly diverse community. And we would, we're working towards making our club membership reflect that diversity more appropriately. Um, we have so much to learn from each other. You know, it's, um, and, and we have, we have an amazingly vibrant and active uh, group of women. Uh, but, you know, we'd love to share what we know and learn from other women whose life experiences have perhaps and very likely been much different than ours. Yeah. I think having an Indigenous film festival is a good way to... Um, engage some of that diverse community. Well, and I think it alerts people to the work that CFUW is doing in the community. Yeah. 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 And I also think the rebranding exercise that we've been undergoing, you know, going back to using the acronym Mm -hmm. 
is a very good thing because it emphasizes that we're open not just to university women. We're open to women throughout the community who share our values and our purpose. Mm -hmm. Are you looking to have gender diversity in the organization no. as well? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it is women. It is yep. women. Mm -hmm. okay. Women supporting women and our tagline is realizing potential for all women. Okay. Thank you. That's great work. We, we love it. Yeah. You're involved in a bunch of other organizations as well. I, mean, mm. I was happy to see your name being uh, put forward to come on uh, this uh, CKMS Community Connections as a guest because I knew you from uh, being on the board at the uh, Social Development Center. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yes, indeed. How busy are you? <laughs> Less busy than I was, let's say, a few years ago. I had a serious accident which... Um, uh, put paid to my mobility, basically, uh. so it, it has kind of slowed me down. But, um, yeah, i busy enough to still be in trouble, <laughs> as my kids put it. <laughs> so there's a social development center, the CFUW. I expect you're yeah. involved in a bunch of other organizations, too. Well, yeah, a few. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Give any shout-outs to uh, these organizations? Oh, certainly a shout-out, big shout-out to... Um, the Social Development Center. I mm -hmm. mean, I really have seen the Social Development Center as my second home. Um, and the work that Social Development Center is doing in the community is is remarkable. And there are all kinds of Indigenous connections there as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, um, Land Back, for example, is part of the shared platform services right. that are coordinated by Social Development Center, and they're, they're a major partner mm -hmm. in Civic Hub. Right. Yep. You've actually got a show about the Civic Hub called Welcome to the Civic Hub, which will air later today, oh. uh, Monday at uh, 1 o'clock. Great. Uh, Ritika Shermali is coming in to co-host, and I think we have somebody from Community Gardens uh, in as a guest nice. today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you're involved in any other organizations, uh, I would invite them to come here on uh, CKMS Community Connections well. as well. I'll so certainly that, yeah, we can put that out there. We can explore what those organizations do and uh, bring them from the community into the community. Great. Uh, the listening community. Well, I think this radio station is a terrific <laughs> community resource. Well, thank you. Mm. Thank you. I have uh, volunteers to thank for that. The, uh, station is well, we know all about volunteers, don't we? <laughs> I mean, CFUW is nothing but volunteers. Uh -huh. The only paid staff are in the Ottawa office, and there are only, I think, two of them, maybe two and a half, mm. for this, you know, countrywide organization of 121 clubs. It's yeah. it's remarkable, yeah. frankly. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of volunteer uh, participation yep. in Waterloo Region all around. Uh, I've been involved in multiple other organizations as well, and all of them are, are top to bottom volunteer run. Mm-hmm. And such impressive people, eh? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And very often, it's the same people in multiple organizations. Oh, uh, yes. See many of the same faces in different places. Um, and so you get the impression that maybe there's only a, a small core group of people <laughs> that are really doing all the work. You do get that impression, but I don't want to undersell the, for example, the volunteers from our club that turn up to our annual book sale, mm -hmm. you know, and that might be uh, their sole uh, sort of activist or community um, activity on the part of the club, but it's vitally important, you know. Yeah. Everyone's contributions count. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when I said it's an impression that it's just this small core uh, group of people, um, that is just so. It's just an impression because... In fact, there are um, hundreds, thousands of volunteers uh, across Water Region that uh, participate in all manner of yep. things. Um, if not the social justice organizations that I'm familiar with, it'll be in sports organizations or um, music groups. There's a, a huge, rich uh, music community in Water Region as well. And I suspect a lot of the music that's being presented is done not on a paid basis. Oh, so, I'm sure that's yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. 
it's, um, yeah. It seems to be a sign of the times, you know, that um, there's lots of work that needs to be done, but very little remuneration for that. Yes, yes, and government support is, seems to be declining yeah, all the time. Government support is declining. Um, wages for paid work uh, have stagnated. If uh, the work continues to exist at all, that is. And you're seeing all this automation happening all over the place, and uh, job loss is a result of that, so. Well, almost all the resolutions that we adopt at CFUW on a national and provincial basis as well um, have a component in them of funding. Yes. More funding, yeah. more support. Uh, are the paid staff in Ottawa, are there any of them dedicated to fundraising? Not as such, no. Mm. Um, they uh, have a big job on their hands just uh, doing the work that they do of liaison with government. Uh, okay. Which is why the head offices are in Ottawa. In fact, our uh, local club president here, Chris Bailey, is going to be one of the ten delegates uh, selected at the national level to uh, delegate at uh, the UN um, later oh. this summer uh, for uh, their uh, status of women initiatives. Okay, that's, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Pretty exciting. She's going to be going to New York, you know, delegating oh. directly to the UN and, committee. And what sort of policies do you expect to influence in doing that? Um, we haven't heard yet what's on that committee's agenda, but doubtless they will be those issues that concern women around the world. Okay. Um, uh, access to health care? Just access to health care. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of... Action against gender-based violence mm -hmm. is a big one, especially now, you know, with all the wars and the headlines. Um, yes. Yeah. I'm sure this international committee is going to be paying big attention okay. to gender-based violence. Good. Yeah, That's good. Is there something that um, local people can do to get involved in CFUW? You bet. Uh, go to our website, which is cfuwkw.org, and you'll see on there a page that will take you to our membership page, our registration page, and I think for, in terms of, you know, call it bang for your buck, um, CFUW is a real deal. Our membership fees are only $120 a year. It's only $40, half that for students, uh, $60 a year, and um, also reduced fees if you join in uh, the year after January, um, and you know, you're welcome to connect with us, to ask us any questions you might have, and we would love to see you. And our general meetings, apart from our annual general meeting and our resolutions meetings, are open to anyone, both genders, Bob. Ah, very good, yeah. very good. Yeah. So you would be welcome to come to our general meetings, and they're great because our speakers are always terrific. Yeah, we'll uh, certainly have that link to the CFUW website on our show notes as well. Great. Want to just recap uh, what's happening in February? You bet. We have an Indigenous uh, film festival, which we've titled Winter Storytelling, a celebration of Indigenous film. We're showing three films, Run, Woman, Run, on Monday, February the 5th, matinee at 2 o'clock at the Princess Twin. The second one, Beans, also on a Monday, February 12th, again at the Princess, 2 o'clock. And the third one is an evening showing of Bones of Crows, again at the Princess, at 7 o'clock on February 28th. Okay, and this is all available to the public at no cost? Available to the public at no cost and donations welcome to our partner organization, Indigenous Youth Roots. Okay. 
Let's have a, a listen to a little bit more music. Um, camera noise again? You can, uh, you can certainly do that. And then um, we'll be back in uh, a minute or two to um, just have a, a quick chat with Barbara uh, about CFUW and the Indigenous Film Festival that's happening in February. Uh, this is actually not that This is type of work for sure it is talking about technology and how technology sometimes fails us we uh, don't have camera noise at our fingertips but we do have the canadian brass that was je me souviens uh, by the canadian brass of which we have very little in our digital library so i intend to uh, add these tracks from the canadian brass to our uh, library and that'll be uh, a good addition to our instrumental repertoire as well as our Canadian content requirements. Uh, if you're out there as a musician and you want to um, have your music in our library, let us know. Send us an email, office at radiowaterloo.ca. Uh, make sure you put KWCon in the subject line. That's an indication that it's um, content from the Kitchener-Waterloo, Cambridge, Waterloo region area. And that's the kind of music that we're particularly interested in promoting because after all, uh, it's a community radio station and you're part of the community. Barbara Spronk is here from CFUW, which is another part of our community. It's been really good to have you here on CKMS Community Connections. Well, it's been a delight to be here. And all your talk of music, Bob, reminds me that uh, CFUW awards $60,000 a year in scholarships and bursaries. Wow. Ah. Yeah, mostly at the post-secondary level. But we also have an award for uh, a member of the local youth orchestra.
be there every Monday at 11 and Fridays at 3.